Hello there YouTube, this is Necrostevo and it's time for round one in the ultimate Generations Gauntlet. That's right, Mike Hobson and I go through each cartridge generation, we both choose a version, and then we kind of get into things. So uh, the only stipulations are um, no legendaries on either team at all, it doesn't matter if it's a good legendary, bad legendary, no legendaries, can't do that. And you have to use at least three version exclusive Pokemon. So in this first battle, I've chosen red version, which leaves him with blue. And my three version exclusive Pokemon are gonna be Primeape, the Arcanine, and the Vileplume. Of course, I also had access to Electabuzz and Arbok, but I didn't really, um, uh, I had just rebred my uh, Vileplume to be a defensive one from Louie way back in, I think, fifth gen. Uh, so I rebred that one, I rebred my Pixel, I rebred uh, Baroque the Primeape, I rebred my Alpha, the Kabutops, and then of course I get access to a very, very nice Mega Beedrill, so fantastic there. Now I was worried about um, him having access to uh, some of the more annoying Pokemon, like Magmar with Vital Spirit can switch in on uh, Vileplume all day. Mega Pidgeot kind of blows my whole team back except for Pixel, so I have to keep Pixel alive for that. Uh, Sand Slash can set up and get rid of the rocks just like my Kabutops can. Um, he also might have had Mega Pinsir here, uh, which does a lot of damage to my entire team with Priority Quick Attack outside of my Kabutops. Uh, and then a possible Scarf on Kingler. And of course Hitmon Lee likes to run things like Fake Out Shenanigans or uh, set up Substitutes, all that type of uh, fun, fun stuff there. Go away, Bug. I'm going to squish you if you don't go away. All right, cool. Now, as far as this is concerned, I really want to start off with Beedrill here. I can go for Protect if he happens to start off with anything that's uh, faster and immediately get off my Mega Evolution. I want to make sure that I'm the fastest thing on the field or force him into some of his options later on. Uh, he does start off with Hitmonlee. I figured he would just fake out, but he makes a smart play and goes out into his Magmar, which actually made me think that it was a more defensive bulky Magmar. Spoilers, it's much more offensive. Um, just went for Protect, which was good, because if he happened to have Flame Body, the U-Turn might give me the burn hacks right there, and I don't really want to deal with that. I go out into Gabutops just to take the possible fire move. That does pan out pretty well. No sense in over-predicting this early on in the battle, but I'm still trying to feel out the type of sets that he brought. Now, I, did, I am going to use this opportunity to just set up my Stealth Rocks. This is a very defensive Kabutops, which is why you see Leftovers here. And I do not have uh, Waterfall, I have Aqua Jet, Stone Edge, Rapid Spin, Stealth Rock. So, uh, he misses his Toxic on Vileplume, which is pretty interesting because if he had hit, it wouldn't have worked anyway. So, I am going to go for Sleep Powder, expecting him to either stay in and spin or switch out. Fortunately for me, he goes out into Pidgeot, which is nice because that does turn out to be his Mega Pokemon. And it has to take a mandatory turn of Sleep here, so that means I can get off a Sludge Bomb. I do some very nice damage to it. Uh, now that it has no guard, I don't have to worry about missing my perfect accuracy uh, sludge bomb. So all worked out very, very well there. Um, I go out into my pixel here just because the special bulk can take anything from Pidgeot very, very nicely. Uh, and I do just go straight for Ice Beam to hopefully finish off the Pidgeot, but Hitmonlee actually has pretty decent special defense. So that doesn't do very much to Hitmonlee. Uh, I do have a nice physically defensive Arcanine with Rocky Helmet to bring in against the hit Lee. Barring a potential Stone Edge, I could take any hit pretty well from it. He does knock off my Rocky Helmet, which is unfortunate. Uh, I would have liked to get a little bit more use out of that. Basically, I got to bring my brand new hat in the battle and it immediately got knocked off. Not cool. But, Flare Blitz is a good middle ground play here. I was considering going for Will-O-Wisp, but uh, I didn't want him to go into Magmar. I at least wanted to get some damage on Magmar. Uh, but he goes into Kingler, which is pretty ballsy. Um, Kingler's nice defense allows him to take that hit very nicely. And uh, Kuki Kuki ends up withdrawing as I go out into Vileplume, not taking very much at all from the Crab Hammer. Uh, just going to keep on going for Sludge Bomb. I could have gone for Giga Drain, uh, but Sludge Bomb gets such nice neutral coverage against this whole team. We kind of have to make use of that. Um, Magmar comes in and gets poisoned by Sludge Bomb, which is not something I feel like I see very often. I don't feel like the poison actually happens from Sludge Bomb as often as I see Skull Burns. But wow, that Flamethrower does a lot of damage for me resisting it and having a large HP investment. He is going to go down to poison. I don't think that matter very much because I do have extreme speed on this Arcanine. I could have extreme 
bet it. I could have uh, prioritized it. There we go. That's the right way to say that. As I go into my Porygon here, he goes for Crab Hammer and misses. That actually probably mattered a good bit. Because, uh, especially if he's adamant, he had a chance to 2 hit KO. Because I'm all specially defensive invested. Specially defensively invested. Something like that. I don't know, guys. Bear with me here. Uh, he makes a good play going out in the Sand Slash on my Discharge there. Ice Beam wouldn't do very much to Porygon. I mean, to the Kingler. And I am just going to go for a Toxic here to see what he does. I wasn't sure what to expect from him. Uh, he goes for, once again, Toxic as I bring out my Vile Plume. And that stuffs that pretty hard there. Uh, Sand Slash does get interesting coverage options like Super Fang. Uh, it can boost his attack with Swords Dance. And it can also use pretty powerful stab earthquake there but we haven't seen any of those options from his sand slash thus far uh, i do wish i had gone for sludge bomb there as he switched in hitmonlee because uh, this blaze kick it looks like a roll on whether or not it's a two hit ko because but once again vileplume coming through with another sludge bomb poison that's two in one battle and that's going to be enough to take down the hitmonlee after one more turn of poison so I might as well switch out here and try to preserve my Vileplume, because that seems to wall the Kingler pretty well, um, amongst other things. Uh, Blaze Kick is not going to do very much to Arcanine after minus one, but it still does a little bit more than I expected it to, honestly. Uh, he goes back out into Kingler here, and that's where I find out that he's Scarfed, because he does outspeed my Arcanine. And that Rock Slide is going to be enough to take me down, um, and he's not Scarfed. I don't know why I said that. What battle am I thinking of? But Life Orb, there we go. Uh, Sheer Force Kingler is a thing, so that still makes perfect sense. Granted, he had Hyper Cutter. It's okay, Steven. You don't have to remember everything about the battle. Yes, you do. That's why you go for a U-turn here. Expecting him, I did not go for close combat there because I really expected him to switch. And uh, I didn't want to have the lower defenses there on my Scarf Primate. Um, I do U-turn out into Kabutas, but since he's still asleep, it doesn't really matter that I got a critical hit there because I had the increased priority with Aqua Jet anyway. So that worked out well. Also, if I had locked into close combat, that would have been a free switch in for his pincer, which is actually scarfed. And wow, that uh, that Excessor did a lot of damage there. Didn't expect that. Um, but ew, we barely hold on after that one. That means I could have actually gone for Stone Edge, but I was very deathly afraid of missing Stone Edge, which is why I didn't go for it. I wanted to make sure I put some damage on the pincer, and that would make it manageable for my other teammates. However, if I didn't put damage on the pincer, Beedrill doesn't really have anything to hit the pincer with. I have U-Turn and Poison Jab. Poison Jab probably could KO it from 75%, but I didn't want to mess around with any weird uh, probabilities like that, because he could easily KO my Beedrill with a plus one in attack. So, uh, yeah. Now that he's paralyzed from Discharge, which is the main reason I use Discharge on Porygon, I can very safely go out into my Beedrill Go for Poison Jab. That's going to take down Pinsir. Very, very nice. He does go out into his Kingler, which now that we know it's not Scarf, I can just go for a U-turn, take down the Kingler, and go back out into Primate because his last Pokemon is Sand Slash. While I don't have Ice Punch on my Primate, with with the Poison that's on Sand Slash, or the Toxic rather, Close Combat should be an easy two-hit KO. And we see that it actually is, which means he actually might be a more offensively inclined Sand Slash. Uh, Primate barely holds on from that Earthquake right there. Just awesome Primate. I really enjoy battling with this Primate in the Johto Classic, actually. Um, and that means we are going to be able to take this battle very narrowly. I think that's like a 2-0. Um, yeah, that was a fun battle. Uh, generations battles. Very, very cool. That is a concept that Chewie and I actually came up with, with him being the originator there. I just pitched in some some kind of more secondary ideas but we will also be doing the other versions um, if there are versions you would like to see me play with teams of remember the rules there you have to use at least three version exclusive Pokemon and you can't use anything out of the regional decks for that version and no legendaries which is what I think makes it a lot more interesting because then you can't just go all willy-nilly it really limits your choices and in order to still to still to still to still I just stuttered you might put the record back and think that uh, there was a lapse in the video. No, I just had a random stutter. But in order to build more properly, you really have to look at all those really interesting options, which is what I like because then I get to breed new Pokemon. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please hit that like button because this is a new type of battle that I'm doing. 
And if you want to see more, that's the best way to show it. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye now.